So a conversation on attitude is everything. And I love the fact that they started with worship and started with singing because music lifts the heart. So with that, I'll, I'll throw it over to Chad because Chad, I love the, the first thing that you typed in the chat. Uh, which was super awesome because I love that quote and you've said it time and time again. If you could just share it with everybody that's listening right now. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, Craig had said attitude is everything and uh, your attitude equals your altitude. Meaning that if our, if we have bad attitude, we're very limited by how far we can go in life. I mean, Jim Rohn years ago, kind of, uh, I bought into the, his philosophy that there, there's a, there, there's really five things and it's, it's your philosophy and your philosophy leads to your attitude. And then your attitude leads to your action. Your action leads to your results. And then your results leads to your lifestyle. Everybody wants the lifestyle, but to have the lifestyle, you've got to have the right philosophies, the right attitude, the right activity, which leads to the results in the lifestyle. So attitude is everything, just like Craig said. So um, he said a negative mindset never leads to a positive life. I'm always very, very careful. I think a lot of people kind of flippantly say always and never. I'm very careful about that, but this is a case where never is true. A negative mindset never leads to a positive. It's impossible to, to have a positive life in a negative mindset. It's just impossible. So that's the, that the first thing. Um, Christ like others centered attitude, man, that is, that is so, so, so important. You know, it's, it's so, so important, especially in, and, and I get that it's, it's, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around in this industry. Most of us are taught when we're growing up, especially in the corporate world, that it's a dog eat dog world. I mean, it, and it's, and we see the evidence of that. We can see people who claw and scratch and shove other people down to get to climb right and and how that it does work sometimes and we see that and it's not fair at all but that does not work here it does not work here this is building a voluntary army you know the only way you're gonna you're never you know when you talk about the using the carrot or using the whip like i was in the military so in the military you can control people's time you can control their money you can control a lot of, you can use the whip all day long because they have no choice. They have to do what you say, but here that there is no place for that in network marketing. There's, there's no place for being bossy and, and wagging the finger and you know, that kind of thing. It just doesn't work here. So what works here is, is calling people up, um, calling out the good in them. It's, it's looking past the dirt and seeing the gold in people and Christ like other centered attitude. And, and the more that, that we all learn and, learn who Christ is, the more we recognize that, the more we can model that, the more like Christ we become, the better everything becomes in life. I mean, I'm just, I'm fully convinced of that. So that was the second thing I wanted to share. Um, Jesus always had and always will have you and I on his mind. And I think this is so important to understand that you and I can take great comfort in knowing that Jesus loves us and that, and that he wants to be your best friend. He really wants to be your best friend. He's just waiting for you to reach out and draw close to him. And, when, and the closer we draw to him, then the promise of the Bible says the closer that Jesus draws to us, the more real it becomes, the more of the good feelings we have, the more of the, ha the unexplainable peace and joy that we can have, the more of the fruits. I mean, I think we, we all could handle being a little more patient a little more kind, a little more long suffering and all the fruits of the spirit that are listed in the Bible. You know, I love that uh, Craig listed the five things and did the challenge. I'm going to do these. I'm going to reach out and challenge other people in our organization to do these too. I think it's, it's so, so important. And the last thing that I wrote down here, and I think this is, this is really good too, is literally the, all throughout the Bible, it's, it's, there's different, different passages that talk about having, having faith. And, and believing, you know, and, and the one that Craig mentioned was we have not because we ask not, you know, and I think that's part of it. We just need to have bold prayers, not, not weak, not weak prayers like, oh, you know, all this poor me, poor me kind of prayers. I think a lot of people are constantly telling God how big their problems are in their prayers. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I just need you to rescue me and save me. And there's a, there's a place for that. But I think instead of telling God how big our problems are. We need to tell our problems how big our God is. 
And the more that we do that, the more that we lift God up and the more that we lift Jesus up and understand that we are protected, that this is just a moment in time that we're going through things, the bigger that God is in our life and the more we raise him up and the closer we draw into Jesus, then the smaller our issues and our problems become. And then we can truly go out and we can spread hope and we can spread love and we can spread all the things that, that Craig was talking about. So I love this today. I thought it was a, just a very, very, very refreshing uh, just the song, like Joel said in the beginning, we, we, we need to get that frame of mind, how a lot of you feel right now. We can feel that way all throughout the day. It's just taking a moment to unplug from the stuff and plug in, plug into God. I think that's, that's so, so important that we do that. Um, but I loved it and I thought it was great. Thanks, Chad. For some reason, I was getting ready to talk, and I was like, nope, I'm on mute. <laughs> Tay, throwing it over to you. Light this thing on fire. Yeah, uh, that was so good. And I just thought it was um, – he didn't have to stay on long to get his point across of what we should do. He basically gave us the simple things, like Chad said, just to refresh us. Uh, so some of the things that I wrote down was I felt like Chad was over here looking at my notes as he was speaking. So <laughs> – uh, yeah, the first thing that he said uh, was the negative attitude never leads to a positive life. And I just thought about how he opened up with worship music to set our, set our hearts in the right place uh, so that we would soften our hearts and be able to receive whatever he had uh, to share with us today. So uh, for me, I think you have to set your mind right, right when you get up in the morning. You have to go ahead and set your mind in the morning so it can lead the direction of your life. So uh, whether that's... Um, daily devotionals, whether you just wake up and just put on worship music, whether you just wake up and do quiet times or uh, whatever it, uh, that you do that you feel most comfortable with, that you can set your mind in a good attitude, in a good place uh, so that you can just go out today, uh, live with gratitude and just really seeing the good and everything. I think whatever that is, then you should start uh, doing that. Because when he played the worship music, my heart just, uh, it just, um, it felt like my heart just opened up. So uh, he could have got on and said anything, and I would have just received it because my heart was in such a great place. So, uh, and then the second thing he said, Christ like, other centered, centered life. Uh, don't focus on yourself, focus on others. And uh, I, I think that's uh, something that a lot of people hear uh, now, especially with the social distancing, because uh, most people, I, I don't think that I don't think they see the big picture in this and see uh, the amount of people who are very vulnerable. Uh, to this virus that's going on, and that's the, the older people. And uh, I think we just need to be, when we say uh, keep others in mind, we need to uh, keep others in mind in the fact that we never know, like, if we're caring or not. So we need to be thinking of those people, not thinking that, you know, we're bored or we want to get out of the house and we want to do these things. Think of the people that already uh, been impacted by this and think of, like, the ways that we can keep this uh, from spreading by just doing the simple things and staying you know, in the house and just doing the things that, you know, the, uh, the leaders within the country has already issued us to do. So for me, that's just keeping other people in mind, thinking this may not affect you, but think about the people that uh, it may affect. So, uh, and then he said, um, I just, when I thought about that, I, I thought about the Zig Ziglar quote. And he said, uh, if you can help enough people in life get what they want, then you will get everything that you want in life. And uh, immediately I thought about Mark when, with the coffee, uh, coffee dealer hat. I was like, you know, we got the coffee dealer hat. So now, uh, as he said, like, we're hope dealers. Like, put on your hope dealer hat. When you're on social media, when you're on these things, like, people should see you, and they should see Amigo, like, you are a hope dealer. You are a person of faith. They should be able to go just watch whatever platform form you're on and know that you're a person of faith and know that you're a person who are going to continue to put out good things and not focus on the negative things. So uh, for me, it was just put on your, your hope dealer hat and just continue to feed people. Uh, he gave us seven things that we can do throughout the day. And for me, I think those was action steps. You can take just one of those things and uh, just basically one day a week, just do one of those things. And I think if you do that, it'll keep you uh, in a position of gratitude and uh, humility. And I think it also helped the people who, uh, who are following you as well. And just the third thing I got was uh, just from the scripture that he uh, said in uh, Philippians, uh, one, the one thing that really stuck out to me in the, in the scripture said, work together with one mind and one purpose. Don't try to impress others, but be humble. And I love that because I think many times uh, every uh, like Joe said, a lot of people, uh, leaders that, you know, we're used to hearing, they've uh, kind of went silent on us. But the one body that has stood up is the church. And they're reminding us, you know, we like have faith. Don't let fear cause you to do things 
uh, or just be irrational in these times, like have faith, have assurance. Uh, and I thought about Jesus when he said have an attitude uh, like Jesus, like that doesn't mean Jesus didn't face anything. Like Jesus went throughout his like life and just hearing people criticize every single thing that he did, but he knew he had something that he had to accomplish. So he moved forward in faith and confidence and humility and assurance of God's word. So I think we have to have that attitude regardless of what's going on around us. Like we have his word that we can cling to. We can have the, the confidence of Jesus. We can have the assurance of Jesus, not thinking that life is going to be perfect and everything is going to go all right. But we know at the end of the day, God is going to use this for his good. We just have to continue to be that, that, that hope for other people. We have to continue to lead in the moment of crisis because we understand, like, not everybody is meant to lead. Uh, and I just think about the beginning when he said, we, if the uh, preacher reached out and he was like, I felt like you guys built the ark and then it flooded. What we have been doing with this personal development platform is building an ark. And now that the flood has came, we have been developing ourselves and preparing ourselves for this time. So now isn't the time for us to shy away from the things that we're learning, but it's time to step up and step into that role that you've already put on yourself because you've been showing up. You've been getting everything that you needed for this time. So I think you just need to step up and just understand uh, the platform that you have. You've been preparing for this moment and just be confident and just be assured that you are born for this time. Like God planted you in this personal development at the time he did because he knew this was coming and he knew the people around you was going to need somebody to lead them through this because most people don't see the, 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 the faith in this. They just see their circumstances. They see all the problems and the lack of things that they don't have. So I think it's our job to point them in the direction of faith and just point them into the abundance of what God is, is planning on doing uh, coming out of this thing. So uh, I just challenge you guys to take one of those things that he did from that list of seven uh, and just try to do one today, whether that's speaking hope, whether that's helping somebody, whether that's praying somebody outside of your circle, whatever the case may be, take one of those things and try to do it today. And I think as you, as you do that, uh, you can set yourself up to challenge them to, to pay it for it and do it for somebody else. And I think this would be one of those challenges, like the push-up challenge uh, that I did, because who doesn't like a challenge? Uh, so I think if you just put it out there, then people would do it because they see the good in it and just see how it can impact, impact people in such a positive way. So uh, it's super great this morning. I just, I love the worship part, man, because I just set my heart right on this something I think Many times we don't need people to speak at us. We just need to just come together with that one mind and one purpose and just remember the overall picture. And that is we is we are in this together. And if we can continue to be in this together with that one mind and one purpose, then ultimately I think we can get through this together as well. So good. Tim, I'm going to touch on something that you said because it's something that I've been saying uh, the last two weeks is most of us aren't aware that this is what we've been praying for. You know, we've been praying, we've been praying, we've been praying, we've been praying. But the thing that happened was it showed up in the most unconventional way. It showed up in a way that maybe we don't like. And that's the thing is when God answers your prayer, it's not always in the way that you think it's going to happen. So guys, we've been praying for this. So now, like Tay said, it's time to stand up. And I, I love the fact that um, this whole conversation was on attitude is everything. And I, I love the quote from Charles Swindoll, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. You know, a negative mindset will always lead to a negative outcome. It'll never lead to a positive outcome. Uh, I, I love what he said, you know, don't, don't think about yourself because when you start thinking about yourself, that's when you start to have the walls close in on you. So be humble and think of others, have an other centered attitude, focus on what you have, and then focus on others. And that will help you during a time of crisis. Uh, I, I know you've heard us say it a lot, you know, the challenge, the seven points. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and share the seven points so that everybody listening knows what we're talking about. So point number one was pray with someone you've never prayed with before. Two, give to someone in need. Three, serve someone. Four, encourage someone who is hurting. Five, post something about your faith on social media so that you can shine a light to others. Six, share an online church service with somebody. Seven, pray for those outside of your circle. Guys, those are seven amazing things that you can do. And right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock two of those off my list. I'm going to knock number one and number seven. 
So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and pray for you guys mm -hmm. right now the, over those things that he had spoke to, to pray about today. So Heavenly Father, we come before you today as an amazing group of leaders who are really others focused and want things to turn out the best for those around us. Today, we pray for those who are sick. God, we just ask for health and protection for them. We pray for those that have lost jobs. We just ask that you would provide for them during this time and then have them get jobs that were better than the ones that they lost. God, we pray for the business owners who are having to make hard decisions right now. Just pray for your knowledge, wisdom, and discernment on what to do. God, we pray for our government leaders. You know that they've got the biggest problems right now to solve. Just ask that you would give them guidance on what to do and make the right decisions that will impact us for generations. God, we pray for those that are serving us right now, that you would cover them with your protection, keep them healthy as they're trying to make others healthy. God, we pray for your pastors. We just ask that you would guide them, give them words to say, to calm people, to bring them closer together, God. We thank you for a great revival that's going to happen. And God, we pray for those that don't know you yet, God. Just ask that the leaders that stand up today will shine your light that will cause people to want to know you more. Jesus, we thank you that you love us, that you're with us, that you protect us. Just ask that you keep us healthy and safe so that we can shine your light. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Guys, go out this week, be a faith spreader, a love giver, and a hope dealer. And we'll see you here again soon. Have a good day.